Hello, my name is Michael Clark. Today is September 29th, 2021, and I'm here to talk to you about the Master Control Program and its implementation of fine art NFTs directly from the manufacturer. Currently, NFTs, non-fungible tokens, are cryptocurrency based, and most cryptocurrencies use uh, mining, otherwise gambling, in order to create coins that we then use for trade. This has an extreme environmental impact and that currency, the actual currency itself is owned by a corporation, not the artist or the manufacturer. We seek to change that. Uh, also, NFTs are currently created long after the art is actually manufactured. And it's more about digital rights management than it is about the original art itself who originated the art and who manufactured the art isn't even verified or included in any of the current NFT methodologies. So the master control program seeks to take a slightly different tactic with this. Our NFTs use no mining for our blockchains and our blockchains are actually owned by the manufacturer of the art. So that leaves the responsibility and really the integrity to the manufacturer where it really should be. So when an artist gives art to the MCP, the artist owns the rights to the item that is then put into the blockchain. And that artist can, for all time, put an additional fee on the NFTs that are created from their original art. So by choice, they can be compensated when their art is bought and sold. So buying and selling of art, yes, you can actually take the physical piece of art and buy and sell it, but the NFTs it have ownership listed in them. So if you list your NFT as being sold through the manufacturer, then it guarantees authenticity of the original. And the manufacturers get the added bonus of being able to stand behind their work. It shows their integrity as a company. Also, our NFTs are very specifically numbered. So you have an original, that's the original NFT. If you make a copy of that, that becomes a new one and gets its own number. And again, that's verified by the manufacturer as genuine. So the workflow is this, you upload art. The master control program creates a signature of that art, which we call the original signature. That becomes a block. The block contains the ID of the upload, the original signature that we just talked about, the original file name, bytes, width, height, created, created by the previous signature and the second since epoch. This creates a solid, solid blockchain that really, really can't be hacked. So then we sign that block and then the next one gets that signature. So it becomes a really impenetrable blockchain. So we take that block, insert it into the blockchain. This becomes the NFT. That NFT can then be bought or sold as seed fit by the owner. So let's go through a bit of how that works. The upload and sign, you take your art file, you upload it to the master control program. It signs it with the manufacturer's private key and creates a signature. That signature then goes into a block and is added to the blockchain. That's the NFT. We do use Python and PyCrypto, the latest fork of PyCrypto. So this is cutting edge cryptography that we use to create our blockchain. So really, really awesome technology. So ownership is a real question with all of these NFTs. In this case, the blockchain is owned by the manufacturer, assuring, in, assuring integrity of that blockchain. The original art is owned by the artist. Right, So you upload to the manufacturer, but the artist still owns that art. The reproductions that the manufacturer makes are owned by the buyer and are serially numbered. Right, Then all NFTs, including the original, can be sold. And that's done through a deed block, which is put into the same blockchain. 
And what that does is just like any other deed, it says this is the person who currently owns this thing. So the artist and the manufacturer both can include fees for that deed. So again, the relationship with the artist and the manufacturer is much more long lived than the third party crypto NFTs that are currently popular. So this is a live demo. This is for real. This is not something that we're theoretically doing. This is an existing piece of software. So I'm going to show it to you right now. We're going to upload a file, view its NFT, purchase a replica of that file, manufacture that replica, view the NFT and the serial number for that replica, then sell it and view the deed for that. We're going to do that right this second. So this is a locker inside the master control program. You'll see it says locker for NFT. I'm going to take an original piece of art that comes from our haunted space hotel application. Here it is. I uploaded that by dragging and dropping. You'll see it. It's of type original, its name, its thumbnail, and the date it was uploaded. But we can drill and get a bit more information on it. So here's more information. It's exact size, the number of pixels, the DPI that it's in. But it also includes, like every single upload to the Master Control Program, an NFT. Let's click through to that. This is the NFT for that item. It has a, a serial number, the date it's created, the signature of that and the owner. Now this is an original, so it's not been sold. So it has a zero sales price, never been sold before. So here we look at, at the details that go into the actual block itself are, like I said earlier, height, width, bytes, but it also includes the signature of the image and the signature of the previous block. This causes to be an immutable blockchain cannot be changed. So there's the record for that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to buy one of these things. So this is from a locker that is locker 33. So I'm going to do a manual order. We're going to list just an example contact. Our manual order is for a three and a half by two and a half width. And that's locker 33, which should be the locker for NFT demo. I'm going to go ahead and order one. Actually, let's order two of those. And we're going to add them and submit the order. This is a manual override for an admin. So I was able to create an order without actually making a payment. Here they come. The price for that SKU was a dollar. So it's two total dollars here. Now we need to manufacture this. So I'm going to go to batches. I'm going to new batch. It's for that printer. Here we go. There's the item. I'm going to go ahead and create this batch. At this point, our Python backend is creating the blockchain entries as well as creating uh, layups and indexes for tracking this item. There it is. Pretty lickety split. We're going to go ahead and look at the original uh, layup file here. You'll see Two, file, uh, two were laid up nice and easy next to each other. If we were to dig into these, we could read what's going on here. But instead, I'm going to go back and just show you blown up. Here's the order itself. You'll see now it has NFTs, one for each of the reproduced items. I'm going to select the second one here. So this is number two, right? The second one. So I ordered two copies of this. Each one gets its own serial number. So this is the second one. It was sold for a dollar. Now say I purchased this and now I want to sell this item off to someone else. Note that it, it notes the machine that it was actually manufactured on, the substrate, everything else. So all the key details about this are immutable. And this is actually a representation of the thing that actually was put on the printer and came out. So this is a worthy representation of that original. So now I'm going to transfer ownership of this piece that I bought to someone else. So I'm going to sell this for $5,000. And the new owner is New Llama. And this is really important. New Llama at Llama.com. Note here, it's 
I am the owner. I'm llama at llama.com. See llama here. But if I change the email address, when I pay the fee, the transfer fee, now this fee comes from uh, the originator. That's the artist says, I want a 10% fee on all future sales. That's mutable. The artist can say no fee or a big fee. And the transfer fee, this is the manufacturer's cost for maintaining the blockchain and maintaining the NFTs for the artist indefinitely. Again, these are all modifiable. These could be zero depending on the manufacturer and artist. Depends on what we're doing. So let's go ahead and pay this fee. There it is. So now this NFT number two has a sale price of $5,000. And its current owner is new llama at llama.com. And you'll note that the transfer ownership button is gone because I'm the originator, but I sold this to new llama at llama.com. So they now own this with the broadcasted sale price. So this actually sets the price for what this is and where it goes. This is the original block in the blockchain. And now you can see the new block in the blockchain for the deed that goes with that. Okay, good stuff. Uh, the block itself was created by this order. So we can go ahead and go back to the order here. We see the NFTs. If we go to the first NFT, it's number one, and I still own it. So I could still transfer its ownership. So that's the basics of how NFTs work, how replicas NFTs work and their serial numbers, and how you can buy and sell the NFTs by using deeds. Uh, this is a study to show how viable this approach is with fine art. So we are looking for fine art industry partners to work with us. If you're interested, please do contact us. Thank you very much for spending some time today learning about what we're doing and how we're doing it.